Northampton resident Jennifer Taub has never met Robert Mueller, the man leading the special counsel investigation into Russia's probe in interfering in the 2016 elections, and whether the Trump administration was aware of any meddling on Russia's behalf. But the Vermont law professor has been interviewed nationally about a range of issues related to the Trump administration. She thinks that's one possible reason that she received a recent email that troubled her. It offered her money in exchange for information about Mueller. She discussed the details of the email with me in the studio. I thought maybe they mistook the fact that I'd mentioned Mueller with the fact that I might have known him. So I thought they had just sort of cats this broad net and were trying to dig into his past. Um, and I immediately was uncomfortable with that and forwarded it. Well, I didn't know what, I wanted to give it to the special prosecutor's office so they were aware someone was doing this. Um, but I don't know Mueller, I don't know anyone there, so I had to figure out how to get it there. Yeah, so you received this email on October 22nd. It was yes. a pretty brief email, um, and it said in part basically alluded to past encounters that you had had with Robert Mueller and would you speak to us kind of generally, broadly, what the email said. But then it went on to say, quote, I believe a basic telephone call for which I would compensate you for at whatever rate you see fit, in parentheses, inside reason, would be a good place to start. So what did you think when you read that in the email? That was what made it so weird. That was the red flag. Um, if you know me, I'm very chatty. I chat on Twitter. I'm happy to chat with you. I talk on the phone all the time. People don't pay me to speak with them <laughs> on the phone. So it seemed like they were sending a signal like, we'll pay you to tell us he did something bad. Well, the, the, the little inside reason bit in the email was kind of one of the things that stood out to me as, well, hmm, that's all grammatically, normally you would say within reason. So when I saw inside reason, I wondered if that was sort of a British way or some, it, it seemed like it was, it just, it struck me as very odd. It made me uncomfortable um, and I wanted to forward it. And I went on Google and found, I, I know that the special counsel's office has a website because that's a great resource where you can find all of the indictments and all the pleas. And so I went to that place and I saw on the right there was an email to contact them and I just sent it along. And did you hear back from them at all? I, I did not hear back. That was Monday the 22nd. Um, and that week, we were really overtaken with all these other events. It was the terrible uh, pipe bombs that had been sent by mail. There was a shooting um, in a store in Kentucky. Two African Americans were murdered by a white supremacist. And then we had the we had the you know the shooting rampage at a synagogue on Saturday. So my mind was just it was not on my mind. Um, and I think it was the following Tuesday, almost just a little over a week later, that. It, at first, it just surfaced in the news when the special prosecutor's office themselves didn't reference my email, but said, made a public statement saying that there were people attempting to pay folks to make up stories about right. Mueller. And, and so Robert Mueller had actually now has come out, asked the FBI to investigate this, because as you say, you're most likely not the only person who has received maybe this email or some sort of solicitation. There's another woman, Lorraine Parsons, who she actually went public via the media and said that she'd been offered twenty thousand um, dollars and that surefire intelligence which actually was behind the email that you received um, had had been hired by a GOP activist named Jack Berkman um, to quote make accusations of sexual misconduct and workplace harassment against Robert Mueller and it was a very specific ask of them to her did surefire ever follow up with you and offer a direct monetary amount or anything more specific than the email you received? So two things. First, they never contacted me again, and I did not contact the person from Surefire Intelligence, who apparently was using a pseudonym. Yes, um, Simon Frick. The was name the of the email was Simon email. Frick, but someone named Jacob Wall has later admitted that he's behind that organization. This other person, um, Lorraine Parsons, no one's really sure if she exists. So what's interesting is the story broke about her because she'd been sending, she or someone using that name, is sending this email around to folks and has never been, never been able to be like Publicly contacted. Identified. Right. So it's all, it's all a very strange, strange situation. Um, but it was when I saw the story break about her um, that Natasha Bertrand had written in the um, Atlantic, um, I contacted her saying that very same day, look, I got an email from Surefire Intelligence and I think um, I would not have probably come forward to the public or to the press about it if I hadn't seen that Mueller's office had done it, mm. right? But as soon as I saw that they were making this public, I thought 
it was important to come forward precisely because no one could find Parsons. And do you have any sense of why you think that they're looking to do this? You know, they said in the Lane, L Lorraine Parsons instance that they're looking for someone to, to sexually make sexual accusations against Robert Mueller. Do you have any indication why they would have contacted you? After I found out about the Lorraine Parsons situation, I began to wonder whether they had reached out to me because I had written an opinion piece about, um, about the Brett Kavanaugh hearings and my own personal experience um, with sexual assault. Mm. So perhaps they read that and thought, well, she wrote about this, maybe she'll make up stories. And so since then, the, there's more attached to the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions. Um, he resigned at the President's request. And there have been protests across the country and in Northampton over the weekend that you took part in because um, while in, people who are rallying against this are concerned, right? What was the main reason that you gathered in Great, or excuse me, in Northampton over the weekend? So th the main reason is that um, not so much that uh, Jeff Sessions is no longer the Attorney General. There's a lot that he did in that role as a policy matter that I don't agree with. I think the one thing he did that was good was recuse himself from the Mueller investigation. And what that meant, I mean, for maybe the viewers who may not remember this, is that um, the Attorney General himself, Jeff Sessions, had worked on the Trump campaign. So as soon as it became um, necessary for a special counsel to be appointed to look into that, that was in May of, of uh, 2017, he decided he could no longer, he couldn't supervise that person because he'd been part of the campaign. So he recused himself and stepped, stepped aside. To sort of move away from any right. implication that there could be some misdeed, or not misdeed, but just him getting in the way of that investigation it, in any and way. Right, and it shows us that um, it just keeps any, any appearance of impartiality away from it. It makes the public trust the investigation. And so Mueller has been very successful, and we can talk about that in a moment, but um, we were protesting the fact that, not that Sessions was um, forced to resign, but, but the person that was put in his place. Matthew Whitcomb. Whitaker. Whitaker. Thank you, Matthew Whitaker. And yeah, Matthew Whitaker was put, who had been the chief, most recently the chief of staff for Jeff Sessions, was put in his role. And there are many reasons why um, that's not appropriate. He's spoken out publicly uh, against the Mueller investigation, even talked about ways that maybe the government could not directly stop the investigation, but things it could do to slow the process and things like that. So the protesters are basically calling on him to recuse himself as well. He should recuse himself, step aside just like Sessions. Let me just add something else, which is another small world situation. I'm not sure if you're, you're aware of this, but um, we talked about how sometimes I've talked about the Mueller investigation um, on national television. Well, the first time I ever did that, my co-guest was Matthew Whitaker. Wow. Yeah. And it was the day that, uh, a couple days after the New York Times had reported that Don Jr., Paul Manafort, and Jared Kushner, part of the Trump campaign, had met with Russian nationals in Trump Tower. And so I'm assuming that you were there um, as the guest who was opposed to some of these, or in support of the investigation and things like that, and he was there speaking uh, to represent the Trump administration, the opposite side. And what's fascinating about the interview is Matthew Whitaker, who at that time was not yet working for Just Sessions, was saying that it was perfectly fine to take the meeting. And he was saying, oh, how could Don Jr. have known that these were Russian nationals and all these different things like mm. that? And I kept saying, you would recommend as a lawyer that someone on a campaign take this meeting where there was someone from a foreign country is promising dirt on their opponent? That's a violation of federal election law. How could you recommend that? And he said, oh, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking the meeting.